Hey everyone, um, welcome to Vlogmas Day 2, or I should say Vlogmas Night 2, because I'm a little bit later with this one. But anyway, today I thought I would talk about um, all the kind of Christmassy reads that I want to read in December. Um, I'm very excited about all of them. Uh, okay, so I guess I'll start with the current ones. Um, currently, I am trying to get through um, Christmas at Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons. Um, this is one that I was actually going to read after I read Cold Comfort Farm, which I tried to read earlier this year and had to, um, well not had to set aside, but I just kind of felt like setting it aside um, after I made the mistake of watching the movie halfway through, which is weird because I enjoyed the movie, but for some reason, like, knowing the ending just kind of put me off for a bit, so I'm going to try to start that over again next year. But anyway, um, I was re-watching a review of this that Leslie from Words of a Reader did uh, several years ago now, and she mentioned that only one of the stories in here um, is actually set at Cold Comfort Farm, which is the title story, Christmas at Cold Comfort Farm. And not only that, but also that it is a um, prequel to the book. So I don't actually need to um, to read Cold Comfort Farm before this. So I've already read the first story in here, which is called The Little Christmas Tree. And it was very, very cute and sweet and very, like, cozy, warm Christmas time. And the next one is Christmas at Cold Comfort Farm. So I'm really looking forward to that one. And there are about 16 in here. So um, I may have to double up. Um, for a couple of days, because if all of them are set at Christmas, then I really want to finish this by Christmas. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying this so far. And then the next one that I'll be reading is I Am Half Sick of Shadows by Alan Bradley. This is the fourth Flavia Deleuze book, and it is the Christmas special. And um, right now I am about halfway through the second one, so I'm hoping to read this maybe Tuesday or Wednesday um, and finish it so that I can talk to Kate Howe about it because she and another um, booktuber who is also called Kate but whose channel name I'm forgetting, um, maybe Novel Nomad? That might be wrong. That might be wrong. If it is, apologies. But anyway, um, they were reading this together and um, I fell behind in trying to catch up with the other two, so then I just decided to um, read this at my own pace and then talk about it with them once I finished. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll finish this uh, sometime this coming week. And then I really want to read um, A Child's Christmas in Wales by Dylan Thomas. I just saw... Um, Leslie over at Words of a Reader put up um, a video about her five favorite literary Christmases, and this was one of them. And this is actually a book that I have never read. This is, I want to say my mom's copy. Oh, it's my aunt's copy um, from the early 80s. And um, it's just really, I love the cover, it just makes it look gorgeous. So I think I'm really going to love these illustrations. And the way Leslie talked about it, I was just like, I need to read this this year. This needs to be on my list. So I'm going to be reading this at some point. Um, and then some that I don't have to show you um, that are also on my list that I just want to talk about before I forget them is um, the American Girl Christmas books. Um, those are all on my shelf over there, but I just didn't grab them before sitting down. And those are some that I read. I try to reread a few of them either on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day every year. And what I do is I kind of alternate. Like, I, I think I have about six of them, and I usually pick three every year. And so, you know, one year I'll read three of them, and then the next year I'll read the three that I didn't read the previous year, and so on and so forth. Um, so, yes, hoping to read those sometime this year. And then... Uh, what's the, oh, another one that I also have that I forgot to grab is If You Take a Mouse to the Movies um, by Laura Numeroff and illustrated by Felicia Bond. And this is the 
I want to say fourth book in the If You Give a Mouse a Cookie series. And this was great. This was like the holiday special one that came out um, several years ago, maybe in like 2010, 2009 or 2010, somewhere in there. And um, it's, you know, set at the holidays and it's the mouse and it's also like he goes to the movies and there's snow everywhere and I love that book so much so I'm definitely going to reread that um and then two of them that the reason I don't have them to show is because one of them is in the mail on the way to me I hope and then the other one is an audiobook uh so the first one is Christmas Saurus by Tom Fletcher I am so excited to read this book. I didn't honestly think I was going to be able to read it this year because I didn't think that I was going to have any extra book money um, to get it, but then um, I did have a little bit, and it's actually pretty cheap. The hardcover is only like $13, so um, I ordered that, and that's on the way, and I think it will get here before Christmas, uh, I'm hoping, and I'm probably going to aim to read that on Christmas Day. Um, if not, maybe Christmas Eve. So yeah, really looking forward to that one. I think it's going to be great. And I have just been so excited about it basically since he announced that he was, um, writing it, but, uh, more so I got really excited when he did the halfway to Christmas video that he posted in June where he walked around London dressed as an elf, um, maybe as Buddy the Elf. I don't know. Um, and then it ended at his publishers and he revealed the cover and just talked about Christmas Saurus because it just sounds so good and it sounds really bittersweet and I think I'm going to laugh and I'm going to cry and the illustrations are going to be beautiful. So really excited for that one. Hopefully it will get to me in time. Um, and then The Chimes is the other one. Uh, the Chimes is by Charles Dickens and the version that I have on Audible, I'm so excited. It's narrated by Richard Armitage and if you guys saw from my November wrap-up my uh, complete cheesing out over uh, Richard Armitage's narration of David Copperfield, um, he is just an amazing narrator. And the thing is, I have known for years that he is an amazing actor because there's so many um, movies and like TV appearances that he's done that I've completely loved. But I had no idea that he was such a great narrator. And... Um, Luckily, my friend Jenny um, mentioned to me, I think back in February, um, that something he narrated was free, and it was the classic love poems, because it was Valentine's Day, and so um, I got that, and I listened to it, and I'm so happy that she told me about it, because it was beautiful, and the way that he narrates is gorgeous, and then especially um, hearing him narrate a whole novel, he does very distinct voices for each of the characters so you're never confused as to like which character you're or which character is supposed to be speaking or anything like that um so yeah he was just awesome and um the chimes is another one that he narrates and it's a little under four hours and it's a charles dickens um christmas story that is supposed to be incredibly scary um it's definitely not like a christmas carol or um, Cricket on the Hearth or anything like that. It's like one of the more, it's basically like the Christmas future, uh, part of Christmas Carol, but scarier. And I don't mean that it's similar in plot. I don't think it is, but I just mean like the ghost of Christmas future is the most terrified that I am when I read or watch a Christmas Carol and just listening to like the first 20 minutes of the chimes last year which for some reason i didn't end up being able to finish it um just listening to that i was terrified so i think i'm gonna be really really scared with that one so i'm gonna try to listen to it not on christmas eve or christmas day because i don't want to be really freaked out um when i'm supposed to be really happy and excited so yes i'm gonna listen to that and i'm looking forward to it and then I think I just have two more to talk about. Um, yes, the other two. One is Let It Snow by John Green, Maureen Johnson, and Lauren Miracle. Um, this is one of my favorite um, Christmas collections to reread. I've probably read it, I want to say, three, three times at this point. 
And so this, I think, will be my fourth time. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to pick uh, a section to read for three different nights between now and Christmas because there are three different stories. And what I love about this is that all of the stories connect and like different characters from each of the stories feature in each of the other stories. It's kind of like uh, Stephanie Perkins' companion series of Anna and the French Kiss, Lola and the Boy Next Door, and Isla and the Happily Ever After, but in a much more condensed version, obviously, and set at Christmas time, and also by three different authors, so you get different, um, different styles with this. And I think my two favorites definitely are the John Green and the Maureen Johnson ones, and then the Lauren Miracle one is good, but it's just not my favorite of the three. I think my maybe my all-time favorite is the first one, the Jubilee, Jubilee Express um, by Maureen Johnson. So yes, very excited to reread this. And then last, but certainly not least, probably the one that I'm most excited for of the Christmassy things, or, okay, lie, it's tied with Christmas Saurus. Um, so Christmas Saurus and this are the two I'm most excited for, and that is The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus by L. Frank Baum. Um, this is one of my favorite children's movies um, ever. I used to watch it all the time when it would come on TV when I was little. Um, there were two different versions of this that were made. One was from the 70s, and it was like a 2D cartoon, and then one might have also been from the 70s or early 80s, and that was a Rankin-Bass um, claymation version. And this is probably the only time I will ever say that, to me, the 2D cartoon was better. And I think it's just because it was much longer, so they were able to adapt so much more of the story. Um, not that I've read it, so I don't actually know, but I had no idea that this was a book until... I was I was in a used bookstore with my friend and we were in the classics section and this was sitting right there and I snatched it up and I freaked out in the middle of the store and my friend was looking at me like I was nuts and I was like Mac you don't understand this was one of my favorite movies when I was little and I didn't even know that it was a book um and you know of course most people know L. Frank Baum from Wizard of Oz fame so this just the idea that he wrote this I was so excited but anyway uh so uh, Amy from Shout Amy is doing, is reading this for, uh, it's on her winter TBR. So when I saw that video that she posted, I said, oh, I really need to read this too. And it's been sitting on my shelf for a couple of years. Do you want to read it together? So we are going to buddy read this. And I don't know quite when I have asked her if she wants to read it kind of, I thought it would be a really cool idea to read it a little bit closer to Christmas, like maybe, the 23rd and the 24th, but I've asked her if she thinks that's like cutting it too close in case we both have like last minute Christmassy things to do. And of course, you know, we'll both be hanging out with our families and stuff. So, um, I don't know quite when we're going to read this, but I'm hoping that it'll be kind of as close to Christmas Eve as possible because I just think that that will make it so much more special. So yeah, super excited for this. And that's everything, and I'm sorry this took like 15 minutes for me to talk about not that many books, but I am super excited about my Christmassy TBR for December, and I'm excited about all the other books I'm reading this month too, if I can get to them, but the Christmas ones, December is my favorite month to actually plan my reading, even though I don't like doing that anymore, but for December, I always love doing that because I love trying to incorporate as many Christmassy wintertime reads as I possibly can. And this year, I think I've got a good list. So let me know if you guys are reading anything Christmassy. If you've read The Christmas Saurus already, like if you're in the UK and you've read it, please let me know what you thought about it, just without spoilers. But I'm hoping that everybody is really going to like it. I know Kate Howe has already read it, and she really enjoyed it. Um, and then I told her about Tom Fletcher's vlog channel, and so she's been watching those and really enjoying that. So, uh, yeah, just if you've read any Christmassy things and you're enjoying it, please let me know because I love Christmas time stories. So thanks for watching and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.